here with Fernando Masanori, who is a professor at San Jose de Dos Campos, um, uh, and he loves teaching. He developed projects for Software Express, Cobra Technology, Credit Card, Mastercard, PwC, and a bunch of other places. But uh, Fernando is also the creator of the first Brazilian MOOC uh, to teach programming. Um, it's called Python for Zombies, and I have so many questions. 120,000 students participated. Um, I'm really excited to hear about it, um, about lots of things. Uh, he's talking about Python emergency remote teaching. Uh, and I am really keen. Fernando, I will hand over to you. Hi, thanks for having me. I will speak slowly. Um, my website, my personal website is here in the first slide and the URL of the slides. COVID-19 changed many things in the world. Last month, a UNICEF report says that more now, more than 1 billion of students are still out of school without face-to-face -face classes worldwide. Many universities in Brazil are now without any type of classes. FATEC, my university, decided to go online to keep education alive, to keep in touch with the students during the isolation. More than 75% of my students are low income. So education is an opportunity they have, and the isolation is an invitation to give it up of their studies. A lot of people in the world teaching, teach programming in Py with Python. So education is a fundamental part of our community. I will share my experiences in this talk. Work at home is very hard. With kids, cats, dogs, whatever, in the same place all the time. I have two dogs and five cats. And they, they are very, very social. Whenever they heard, he, heard me talking to the computer in the classrooms, they wanted to participate. Neighbors also make more noisy than we expected. <laughs> so it is one of the <laughs> my cats is Guido, and for because Guido van Hossen. <laughs> And uh, teachers are very communicative in their nature. In the face-to-face -face meetings, I catch in the air difficulties of my students. So improving interactions is a key process in remote teaching. My colleagues are became very frustrated in the virtual classrooms. A survey in Brazil shows that 8% of the teachers feel unable to teach online. But it's okay to be human. For our students, see a teacher struggling, struggling with technical, technical issues proves that education is something very special. Behind the screen, there are someone, a person that thinks the education worth all these efforts. I have static, uh, a static YouTube channel for flipping the classrooms. Um, oh, sorry. 
there are synchronous interactions in the time of old face-to-face -face classes. So I am a bridge between the content, content of the lessons and the learning process. Of course, there are so many materials on the web. Teacher send glimpses of what need a special attention at each time. Teacher break, breaks new grounds, share his experiences, inspire the student. So teacher is not only a kind of knowledge delivery <laughs> content. Some years ago, I made a first MOOC uh, online course. Now, in the COVID-19, I recorded a new version of the all videos with new playlists, uh, data structures, public data analysis. In the picture, we see a vegan zombie. <laughs> uh, the caption is que nice to say ni in Portuguese. Python for zombies, uh, zombies is equal, equal beginners, is a Brazilian community initiative, not, not of my university, is a Python Django application, is the first Portuguese MOOC to teach programming, because only 5% of Brazilian people are able to read in English. Some students prefer a single, simple YouTube playlists. Others choose a regular website with more order in the content. All videos are very short, four minutes long. A lot of students use cell phones to see the video. So it's important to use big fonts. I have a Blue Yet to record the audio, the most important thing in online classes. Uh, sorry, it's my cat. Um, there are places to ask questions, like uh, many other MOOCs, and a lot of exercises. So the students have a way to practice the programming skills. My way of teaching is using flipped classrooms with Microsoft Teams and Discord for interactions. Sometimes I use other ways, like a cell phone call to a student without computer or WhatsApp audios to answer some particular questions. I decided to use uh, other students' codes to teaching that motivates more to learn. This is a 12 years old girl code. I also teach to kids in my city besides university lessons. This is another 12 years old girl code and uh, this time he is using Unicode in Python 3 to cipher a message in Chinese, with funny. Hitchhiker's Guide, Galaxies Guide is a very popular book in Brazil, <laughs> in the world. <laughs> For students, fun is the best way to learn and play attention. Fortitude is always the answer. Even using Python libraries. Uh, in this example, there are only 42. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Fortitude is always the answer because um, a funny way to teach what is free software is changing the code of random.py. 
because the, the library is open to everyone to change the code. Teach object-oriented class concepts like inheritance or overloading is also fun with 42. Um, there is a class in T42, and I overloaded the Dunderad and Dunder STR because in the right size, uh, you see um, A plus B is 42. <laughs> is also, um, I teach some metaprogramming. Um, Fibonacci and factorial of 666 is very hu hu huge number, but uh, with uh, 42 tricks is um, small. <laughs> the core definition of a language is his abstract syntax tree. I change hello world response uh, at the function for 42. Glimpses of interesting things to students study in the future. Conclusion. The students have a lot of distraction at home, like a message from a crush in a dating app. <laughs> so at home, short videos works well. Record the synchronous interactions are fine to late review. My exams have completely changed, changed. Are now a new way to fix concepts, to learn more. Introduction to programming. 90% of my students conclude the course, which is very good. And the Python community are also in Brazil using, uh, not only in Brazil, at Africa, também, Angola, some countries with Portuguese language, are using my YouTube channel uh, now with uh, 70,000 uh, inscriptions and 2 million views is a rosy number. The website that have independent videos have 4,000 new inscriptions in the last uh, three months. All the news makes me very happy. Don't forget, keep education alive. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fernando. That was fantastic. It was really interesting to see some of the differences between the education uh, that that I am used to and the, that we see across regional areas in Australia as well and, and compare it to something that, that's um, quite different. There were some fantastic uh, chat in the um, in the stream yard. No, it's sorry, in the venueless uh, chat. <laughs> um, I didn't quite grab any much. Oh, here we go. We've got some questions. Bring the questions out. Come on, folks. Um, Thank you. So, uh, Shrey, oh yes, I, I meant to say before, you, you mentioned when we were chatting earlier that um, the applause that you got when the last time you were presenting was was loud and oral. Uh, um, at Oral uh, Python, there are recorded claps. Recorded <laughs> claps, fantastic. We don't have that, I'm afraid, but I, I would like to introduce you to a little bit of Australian culture, which is Auslan. Um, Australian oh. Sign Language. This is <laughs> clapping in Australian Sign Language. So please just assume that the entire stream of people watching are all <laughs> applauding like this. But you can't ah. see their videos. So just just take it from me. Thank you. Um, uh, Shrey uh, was interested in uh, how you deal with plagiarism and online exams. Uh, um, it's to to that. impossible. It's impossible. Teaching is the in the soul of the students. <laughs> But uh, I, I changed the, my exams to uh, some analytic questions, not questions with direct answers. It's a change I made. I guess that would help quite a lot. Um, <laughs> but it is, it is definitely a challenge. And I know it's a challenge that um, 
isn't only uh, isn't only in a, a distributed uh, MOOC or, or post COVID <laughs> problem, but it's definitely a problem at school as well. Um, uh, I'm just double checking the stream to see if there were any other questions that came in. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of juggling as well. There's a lot of juggling. Uh, I was interested in in why, perhaps I missed it, why you called it um, Python for zombies. Ah, zombies is equal beginners because there are a curse rails for zombies. And I take the name. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, yeah. That, yes. that works really well, I guess. <laughs> um, was there anything that you found a lot easier than you expected in in putting the MOOC out? Oh, uh, uh, I, I think um, not easy. <laughs> uh, I think there are some hard facts because um, at the isolation, uh, mental health is, <laughs> is very hard. <laughs> in, in, so uh, I need to talk for personal questions with my students. Yeah, uh, I, uh, that, yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the questions that I've just seen is whether you can share or show the, the resources slide again. Um, I'm not sure if AV still has those slides up. Um, if you could go back to the resources slide, uh, I, a few people wanted to double check um, and get a few more of them that looked fantastic, the list you had. Um, certainly, I know that a lot of teachers um, across the world are interested in extra resources right now. Fantastic. Yeah, and, it's cool, and such cool a great... that, Google Python class. Uh, there are a book, Cracking Code Interview. It's a good book. And some hackathons. Uh, uh, coding bet is is okay. There are Java exercises and Python exercises. Yeah, this is a website. Fantastic. Um, and I, I can see in the chat as well that um, someone has found your slides already and linked to them. Um, so uh, sharing <laughs> all, all possible ways. Um, that's great. Is there any last closing remarks that you'd like to share with us before we go to our break yes my message my message my final message don't forget keep education alive you heard it here zombies but alive um i think that's a <laughs> yes. message we can all get behind thank you so much again for that fantastic talk Thanks and thank you so much me. for for bringing some international flair uh to this uh, little old education track. Um, bye bye. Stay tuned. There's one more important, actually, there's one more important message that I was meant to say before. Um, for those of you listening, uh, for the attendees who have been having issues with your video quality, you can manually set the stream quality by selecting 1080 or 720, uh, like yes. you might do in, in YouTube. You can do this manually in the video player, and that should help um, fix up any problems. But if you're still having issues, then post in the chat and we'll see what we can do. Thank you all so much. And next up, we will be joined uh, by a fantastic speaker, Shrey Samaya. Um, and uh, in fact, they're here uh, ready for their tech check. So stand by everyone, have a chat and we will be with you shortly. Bye bye.